Hello, everyone, and welcome to another bonus episode. I'm Gabe, and today we're going to be designing some new ice types for the Paleon region. Some will be cute, some will be cool, and the last one is probably the strangest design in the region. In the last episode, I asked for suggestions, and you all came to the rescue. I got so many amazing ideas. It was incredibly difficult to narrow it down to just a few designs. And before we jump in, a huge shout out to the Step Bison suggestions. I was this close to doing a primal form of Bouffalant, but I decided to wait until we have regional forms for all of the regions before I give a second regional form to Gen 5. But seriously, such a good idea. Um, our first two designs are based on dinosaurs that we know lived in cold climates. So a huge thank you to those of you who pointed me in that direction. But let's not waste any more time. First up is Pachyrhinosaurus. As soon as I saw the first suggestion for this big-nosed Ceratopsian, I was struck with the image of a dinosaur with a big block of ice stuck to its nose, giving it that, you know, chunky Pachyrhinosaurus look. I also knew that I wanted to bring in some of the speculative quills that Ceratopsians are thought to have had. Smaller Ceratopsians like Cetacosaurus have fossilized evidence of quills sticking out of their rumps. But the larger species have been found with large osteoderms that likely held quills in place. So it's still speculative, but I like to think that it's fairly likely. But what those quills ended up being in our design was decided by the other cold climate dinosaur designs. So you see, I wanted them to work as a pair, um, but to have this bully herbivore be able to pick on the predator, just for fun. Now, it makes for an odd design, but our little Pachys is getting the fire type to really deal with its fellow ice type. Yes, fire and ice together. I was pretty underwhelmed when we got Galarian Darmanitan and its ice fire zen mode, so I figured we could use another. Getting the elements to be balanced on the design was a bit difficult, and getting a color palette that worked for such opposing forces also proved tricky. But in the end, we've got a mean little bully that is a serious offensive threat. This is Blacier. The Temper Pokemon. This hard-headed Pokemon's mood is impossible to predict, fluctuating wildly between being completely relaxed and enraged. Glacier go out of their way to antagonize predators in the wild. Unsurprisingly, they are incredibly difficult to train. Its ability is Flash Fire, so if it's hit with a Fire-type move, it does not take any damage, but its fire-type moves are then increased in power. That only happens once, the increasing in, in power. But still, this is a pretty amazing ability for an ice-type to get. Blacier is something that we'll probably run into once we get up to Mount Paleon later on. It's quite nasty. So let's see the other ice-type dinosaur that Blacier likes to pick on. All right, the other suggestion that seemed too perfect was Cryolophosaurus. Another dinosaur that we know lived in cold climates. Also, the cryo in its name is just too good to pass up. I love the depictions of super fluffy dinosaurs, and I wanted to take a potentially scary theropod and make it much more huggable. Now, I wasn't sure about the second typing until I stumbled across a flower that was restored from a 32,000 year old squirrel cache in the Siberian permafrost, and it just so happened that the flower petals resembled the distinctive crests on the Cryolophosaurus. And not only that, but the ice-grass typing means that it is particularly weak to Blacier's fire type. So, ice-grass it is. After that, it was just about getting the design round and fluffy enough. I even pulled the particularly poofy toes from one of the reference images. I didn't want the petals on the side of the face to look too sharp, so I gave it a scalloped edge. This led to an unintended but wonderfully silly little mustache on the design too. I tried to pull the colors directly from the flower, but they were a bit too saturated and I felt like I needed to tweak the petal colors in particular to get something that felt cooler. 
And here is Cryoliage, the ice flower Pokemon. This sneaky predator lived in Arctic regions where it successfully camouflaged itself as snow-covered vegetation. Cryoliage use a mixture of fluffy feathers and bushy leaves to stay warm in the coldest of conditions. The petals they shed in the summer can be used to brew a delicious minty tea. Its ability is Fur Coat, so that reduces damage from physical attacks by half. And it needs that because, I mean, we've been over it, the ice type is not good, so being able to half all that physical damage is kind of necessary. I think that these two make for a fun duo, and we needed some more single stage designs for our region. If you had to pick between the two, which would you prefer? This next Pokemon is all due to one phenomenal suggestion. SMG brought to my attention the ancestor to modern penguins, the Waimanu. Weird, cool name. And SMG suggested that we could do a design that was the common ancestor to Delibird, Empoleon, and Ice Q. And I thought this was a super fun idea. A great design challenge as well to try and hint at the elements for those three different penguin designs. Starting at the top, I wanted some ice on the head to link towards Ice Q's head covering. I added some shards of ice around the neck to hint at Empoleon's cool collar that it gets. The yellow little eyebrows are meant to point towards both Empoleon's trident headpiece as well as Delibird's big old eyebrows. And lastly, but certainly not least, I gave it a big poofy tail to reference Delibird's Santa sack tail. Waimanu also did have a longer tail compared to modern penguin, so that works too. And lastly, that tail will be important when this Pokemon evolves. Yes, it evolves, but for simplicity's sake, we're saying that the other penguin Pokemon evolved from this species, and that over time its evolution died out. But before we get to that, here is Penguno, the proto-penguin Pokemon. Researchers suspect that this species branched off to become the Delibird, Ice Q, and Empoleon Pokemon lines. Penguno store food in their poofy tails, though its size makes them poor swimmers. It grows a necklace of ice shards to appear threatening, but most find that Penguno just looks cute or goofy. Its ability is Slush Rush, and that boosts a Pokemon's speed in a hailstorm. It's a fun and weird little ice-type bird, and we'll probably introduce it in the next route's cliffs. But what could it evolve into? Well, there was one other suggestion that a lot of you wanted. A suggestion that I initially wasn't too keen on, since we already have another Pokémon representing that animal, but it was highly requested. So we are going to make a Woolly Mammoth. That is right, a woolly mammoth. You're probably asking yourself, how can an ice-type bird turn into a pachyderm? Gabe, have you lost your mind? Well, my friends, I thought all was lost until I remembered the recently extinct elephant bird of Madagascar. Elephant bird, surely there is more than a little wordplay. Our elephant bird will be posing as a mammoth by keeping its head down like a trunk holding its wings out like ears, moving its fluffy tail like a big elephant butt. Along with icy tusks and eyes, we end up with a pretty convincing silhouette. Oh, it's weird, but you no, know, it follows the sometimes loopy Pokemon logic. Anyway, here is Mimiton, the elephant bird Pokemon. Penguno, who grow frustrated with not being taken seriously, evolve into this frightening Pokemon. Mimiton keep their head low to the ground so that it appears to be the trunk of a large tusked behemoth. The back half of its body is just its very poofy tail. Its ability is Intimidate, since it looks like a big scary mammoth, and that lowers the opposing Pokemon's attack stat when they enter battle. I'm really happy with how this concept turned out. I've always kind of disliked Mamoswine, so it's good to have another Woolly Mammoth option. And there are our new ice types for the Paleon region. 
Let me know what you think of them down in the comments below. A huge thank you to all of you who gave such amazing suggestions and a very special thank you to a young but very talented artist who sent me his own ice type designs on Instagram. Keep up the good work. I'll see all of you in the next episode where we will meet a newly created character and unlock the battle mechanic for the Paleon region. See you then. Bye!